What's going on, everyone? It's your girl, Rebecca Ruper, here with Inside the Ring. And today I am here with Edgar Belanga Jr. And you are fighting this weekend, March 19th, 2022, at Madison Square Garden at the Hulu Theater against Steve Rolls. Edgar, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm ready to rock Saturday night. So I saw that you are from Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. How does it feel to be the main event at Madison Square Garden at the Hulu Theater? Um, it feels amazing, you know. Uh, it's my first fight back since you know since the pandemic. I was supposed to fight at at the Garden right before the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. and you know they canceled everything. So you know it's a blessing. I'm happy. I'm here in my hometown. Um, you know, like I always do. I'm bringing fireworks. So you know, get your popcorn ready for everybody that's gonna be tuning in uh, this Saturday. I feel like the weight made it a little bit sweeter, a little more special this time around, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I want to start with you from the very beginnings. When did you pick up your first pair of gloves and why? Um, I was uh, seven years old, and um, the reason why was, you know, my dad had came home from jail, and, you know, I was outside. You know, I was, like, about seven years old, but I, I was already, like, tuned into a lot of things. You know, I was outside, hanging out. And stuff, and then my dad was like, "Yo, you know, to my mom, like, Yo, we gotta put this kid in some, you know, he has to do something just to keep him occupied, get him a little tired, you know, mm -hmm. especially after school, I didn't have nothing to do, so you know, he just threw me in the gym, and it wound up taking me here." And did you compete in New York Golden Gloves? Do you guys have diamond gloves in New York as well? Or? Uh, no, no diamond gloves. Okay. We did, um, we did, um, I tried to do the the, uh, the golden gloves i want to uh tear my well breaking my ankle oh, okay. getting ready for that but um i'm olympic uh trial qualifier and um you know just uh i got over 160 some amateur fights eight time national champion um traveled the world you know travel all 50 states you know competing with different uh people was there a point in your amateur career where you realized that this is what you were meant to do professionally as a career yeah, for sure. You know, um, when I hit like at the age of like 15, I was like, I right, I think I'm gonna take this serious. Mm -hmm. You know, I seen like all the guys making money and stuff. I was like, damn, I could probably make a good chunk of money in this and change my life. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, now I want to talk to you about current day this coming Saturday, March 19th, against Steve Rolls. Um, as I was looking at your record on Box Rack, and I was looking at Steve Rolls. The only loss that he has is against the one and only Triple G. Do you believe that this is the biggest test of your professional career? Yeah, of course. You know, every fight we, we uh for every fighter, you know, that we that we choose and pick is like a little step up, a little step up, you know. Mm -hmm. My last fight was a step up from the fight that I fought in, in April with Demar Nicholson. So this fight is another little step up. Even though, you know, Coursera's fought on um, Billy Joe Saunders, you know, but um the same thing, you know, Steve Rose stepped in there. His only loss is to, to Triple G, you know. So these are the type of oppositions we're looking forward to, you know, into fighting. I'm glad he took the fight, too. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't want to fight or they're not getting paid, yeah. you know, what they want. So they won't fight. But I'm glad he took the fight. And, uh, you know, now we made we made a uh, main event happen. Yeah, well, your fans have been waiting for quite some time. So we're excited to see you back in that ring. Um, for this fight camp, uh, was there something that you specifically focused on to get you ready for this fight against Rolls? Um, just uh, not necessarily for him, you know, just in general, my career, you know, we moved it to training camp to Vegas. You know, I don't want people thinking because of my last fight, I moved over, over to Vegas because of him, you know, it's just just good for my career, period. Um, I feel like being in Vegas was a, is, a, is a lot different, you know, um, I'm around like more great fighters like myself, mm -hmm. you know, Shakur Stevenson, Jared Anderson, Kenneth Sims, you know, the list could go on, all the Olympians that come from different countries out there to come get some work. And um, also, too, on my bicep, you know, tearing and, um, and the third round, I went to Vegas to, you know, get out rehab and everything over there. What's one thing that you take away from this past fight camp that you plan on implementing going forward into your career? Um, will you say it again? Like, what's one thing that you took away from this fight camp? Something maybe you learned about yourself, mentally, physically? Um, nothing, to be honest. The only thing that we did improve is, is me going to Vegas and, you know, getting that different type of work. You know, over here, doing camp in New York, it was a, it was difficult because of the commute. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've been telling a lot of people that, like, me training and going to gyms, it was about an hour, hour and a half. You know, in Vegas, it's like the gym is five minutes. Yeah. Strength conditioning is five minutes to run a mountain. 20 minutes you know the track is five minutes so everything is so much closer where i could get a lot of a lot of working 
Yeah, and I saw you were working with Bruce Carrington, yeah. um, Pablo, Valdez, um, also uh, Crunch Time as well. Yeah, yeah. How was it working with them? Oh, it was amazing. You know, my brother Crunch Time came. You know, he didn't even have a fight day. He was just like, I hit him up. He was like, yo, bro, I'm going to go out there with you just to help you and push you. You know, he's not my weight, but, you know, in the gym, he pushes me in those runs too. You know, he was pushing me. You know, he's a smaller guy. So me keeping up with him, you know, I was like, damn, I'm in shape. Yeah. What's one thing, um, if there's one word that you can describe this Saturday night's fight coming up, what would it be? Uh, fireworks. Uh, it's going to be like a celebrity show. You know, it's going, I, I want to make it feel like a concert. You know, I want to make it feel, I want to I wanna have that atmosphere how uh, Miguel Cotto had it, uh, Felix Trinidad had it, you know, at the Garden. I want that same type of atmosphere. I want people to go in there and enjoy and feel like they're in a club, you know, but also enjoying, you know, entertainment of of fighters fighting each other, you know? Well, speaking of the word fireworks, I had to smile at that because when I asked Xander Zayas a couple of fights back, one word that he was going to describe his fight, he yeah. said fireworks. Yeah. And now he is going to be the co-main event on your fight. How is it, um, you know, you're two Puerto Rican fighters. What's the message you're trying to send the Saturday night fight? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's me and my, my, my little brother, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the first time, I think, in the history of Puerto Rico boxing that, you know, you got two young rising superstars in the sport you know you never had that you always have one or you probably had a group that didn't make it you know so with me and him is like you know it's not like you know me and him is the face of puerto rico you know you got him and then you got me you know you speak about me you speak about him you speak about him you speak about me so it's cool to have that that we and i told them too like we making history you know there's never happened before two puerto rican fighters like that that level to get to that stardom you know they never had that so for me to actually have it and, 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 and make history with him. It's amazing. That's great. Well, I have one last thing that I want to do with you. Typically on my show, when I do my Zoom, Zoom calls, because that's when I started, started doing COVID, um, I have this segment I call Unboxing the Boxer. And this is my little box, budget cuts. Um, but I'm going to have you pull out three random questions. Okay. Some of them are boxing related. Some of them are just super random to get to know you on a more personal level. So, okay. yeah, whenever you're ready. So three of them? Just three. Yeah, you can pick one at a time. Okay. All right, and you can just read the question now. I hope you can read my handwriting. Okay. It's bad. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? To read people's minds. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I just want to see, like, I feel like, you know, a lot of people out there is like, you know, there's certain people out there that I'll be thinking, like, it's good. But so sometimes it'd be hard to, like, figure somebody out. So I'm like, like, I could curse. What? I could curse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm like, fuck. Like, I want to figure this dude out, but I can't. So I wish, like, I had that superpower where... Now, I won't, I won't use it all the time because then I feel like I won't have no friends, you know. But on certain people, I'll use it. I was going to say, I don't know if I want to read some people's minds. Some people yeah. are a little crazy. All right, <laughs> second question. Don't look. Uh, uh, Just leave. Pull it out. Just trying to cheat. What's one qu uh, country you would love to visit? Um, Paris. Paris? Yeah. Okay. What's the Eiffel Tower, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. Eiffel Tower. All right, one last question. I'll take the big one. If you could be ringside for any fight ever in history, which one would it be? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I say Muhammad Ali versus uh Joe. No, not Joe Fraser. George Foreman when he did the rope dope. Okay. And uh, that was a, yeah, classic. I wish I was there, cause that's history. You know, everybody talks yeah. about the rope dope. So. Awesome. Well, Edgar, thank you so much for coming on the show inside the ring. If you have anyone, anything you want to shout out, feel free to shout it out now. Um. My fans, you know, my supporters out there around the world, um, Puerto Rico, my island, you know, Latin America, um, and all the races out there that support me. I love you guys, and thank you for the support. You know, this Saturday, tune in, March 19th, main event on ESPN. Um, what time are we fighting? Like around, I'll say, we well, could tune in about 8.30, catch, you know, catch my brother. My two Puerto Rican brothers, um, well, Bruce Carrington is one of them that's fighting. Um, John Bowser is another one. And my younger brother, uh, Zai, Xander Zai is too, man. And then, of course, I'm the main event. So I just want everybody to tune in, you know, get them views, views shits up too, man, for you ESPN, you know? Thank awesome. You Thank you. Thank you.